A deadly mistake. Tonight at 6 on Channel 9. From Colorado's news leader, you're watching 9 News with Ward Lucas and Lanker, meteorologist Bill Custer, and Tom Green Sports. Gays and lesbians march on Washington in what organizers hoped would be the biggest civil rights march ever. Also today, you're looking at the newest Denver Bronco, picked today in the NFL draft. He's not exactly a household name. Not yet. Good evening, everybody. I'm Ann Lanker. And I'm Ward Lucas. Thanks for joining us. We'll have more on the gay march in Washington in just a moment. But first, there were some surprising draft moves by the Broncos today, and Tom Green is joining us now for an explanation. Many people who follow the team thought the Broncos would uh, take a wide receiver, perhaps, to help out Elway. I think they were very much planning on taking a wide receiver if, in fact, they stayed at the 14th pick or if they were able to move up a little further. Instead, they made one trade this morning, moved from the 14th spot to the 11th spot, and that gave them a chance to pick the guy they did take. The Broncos addressed, addressed what Wade Phillips called their biggest need today by drafting Dan Williams in the first round. Instead of using that 14th pick, the Broncos traded up to the 11th just to get Williams. As far as athletic ability, there are very few questions about the defensive end. At 6 foot 3 and 290 pounds, he has the size. And with a 4.9 second 40-yard dash at the scouting combine, he certainly has tremendous speed for a man of his size. The only question comes from the level of competition he faced while playing his college ball at Toledo. The Broncos have defensive lineman Dan Williams number one today. Kevin Cork has spent the day out at Dove Valley basking in the glow of draft day 93. He joins us now live. The Broncos traded up to get Dan Williams and I get the feeling they're happy with the way everything's gone so far, Kevin. I think you're right, Tom. It's a situation where if Curtis Conway is on the board, naturally they go for him. They moved up hoping maybe they could land a guy like that. It's not going to happen, obviously. That guy selected in the seventh uh, pick overall by the Chicago Bears. They do, however, come away with clearly the best athlete on the board, that and Dan Williams. Earlier today, Wade Phillips talked about him and said, we think it's a fantastic pick. And we had to position ourselves, we felt, at the 11th pick to be able to have a choice uh, of maybe that defensive lineman or uh, the wide receiver. Uh, we wanted the defensive lineman naturally first and that's why we took it. In all fairness, I've said it before, no matter who it was that was going to give me the opportunity and draft me, I was going to be happy to be there. And I'm, and Denver is the one that chose me, and I'm happy to be a part of Denver, and I wouldn't ask to be anywhere else. He's no small potato. 6'3 and a half, 290 pounds. Like you mentioned, ran a 4'7", 48 at the Combine. Certainly an impressive guy running that kind of speed. Also the second round pick for the Broncos, Glenn Milburn, 5'8", 177. Another great pick, we believe, by the Broncos. We'll talk more about that, Tom, a little bit later on in sports and again in our next half hour. Back to you. All right, Kevin, we'll get back to you out of Bronco headquarters in just a bit. So the Broncos uh, still going at it in the draft out uh, the Valley. They're through their first two picks, though. But they get the first Toledo rocket to go in the first round. I like that. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Today's big story is the march in Washington, D.C. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of gays and lesbians staged a huge demonstration in Washington. Skip Lozier is there. Skip, organizers claimed a million marchers would be there, but there's a dispute with Park Police over that figure. What's going on? Oh, big dispute. The Park Police say 300,000 people. March organizers say in excess of one million. District of Columbia officials say a million. Who knows how many? It is safe to say that there is a sea of humanity still stretching from the United States Capitol all the way to the Washington Monument. People who are trying to convince the majority of Americans that they have nothing to fear from folks whose sexual orientation is different than theirs. Again! Gays, lesbians, bisexuals, marching past an empty White House to an empty Capitol, calling in one voice for equal rights. We don't need to have discrimination on any level. Sure, equal rights is what it's all about. It's what this country is supposed to be about. The atmosphere among most was upbeat, happy, optimistic. It's good to see your own group, your own people together. But I'm glad to be here. So exciting. Some dressed in outrageous outfits. Some wore outrageous hats. Yeah, Mama loves you. But most looked like average Americans from average American cities and towns because, as they point out, they are. The idea that a lot of us are parents, taxpayers, average workers. We own a minivan. We're as middle class as America gets. They want to live and raise their families free from fear. Family 
families need to realize that we're families like everybody else's. We're here, we're queer, we fought for our country. They are demanding that President Clinton fulfill his promise to lift the ban on gays in the military. They want more funding for AIDS research. This is genocide, the intentional killing of gays and people of color. And despite sending a letter of support, some blame the president and the Congress. The people you voted for have fled the city. Some came here because they felt they had no choice. Being minorities in this country, you have to support civil rights for all. And some straights felt they had to come here too. This woman teaches school in Los Angeles. I have a son who I hope will grow up in a society that will accept him no matter what. The fight for that kind of acceptance is still a long way from being won, but gays, bisexuals, and lesbians gathered here today now seem to feel there is finally some chance that their dream may yet come true. Live in Washington, I'm Skip Losher. Ward? Skip, we had heard reports that there were going to be some large counter-demonstrations. Did you see any of that there? There were small counter-demonstrations, at best minute by comparison to the number of people who were here today marching for equal rights. All right, thank you very much for joining us. That is Skip Lozier in Washington. Residents near Tulsa, Oklahoma, woke up to the aftermath of a deadly tornado today. Last night, the massive tornado swept across a small suburb called Catoosa. The death toll had been at 10, but officials have now lowered that to 7. And as many as 50 others were injured, many treated along Interstate 44 in a makeshift triage area. The tornado tossed around cars and trucks, ripped off rooftops and leveled businesses, including two truck stops. Today, aerials of the damage show its destructive path. 93 homes were flattened, and the governor has called in 100 National Guardsmen to search for other possible victims. The Russian people appear to be voting for Boris Yeltsin and his slate of economic reforms. In a nationwide referendum, it appears Yeltsin is getting strong popular support. Early exit polls show that about 59% of voters have confidence in Yeltsin, with 52% backing his economic reforms. There has been heavy voter turnout which would favor Yeltsin, but his rivals are already charging that there are false ballots in the Russian Far East. No concrete results are available yet. The vote in Russia even came to Boulder today. Russian citizens visiting the U.S. were allowed to vote in Yeltsin's national referendum. They gathered at the University of Colorado World Affairs Conference headquarters to cast their ballots. Even here, many of those who voted seemed to support Boris Yeltsin's reforms. I approve, I approve of the general tendency of the reform, but I'm sure they made a lot of mistakes. They should pay more attention to simple people. We voted uh, for Yeltsin. We support uh, his reform, and we hope that uh, he, is, he is on the right way. This certainly is a special occasion, and the, this event, it unites probably Russians. Even though Yeltsin is appearing to win the majority of ballots cast, his opponents in the Soviet, or, or in the uh, former Soviet Union, plan to interpret the popular vote differently. The Congress of People's Deputies says Yeltsin has to get a majority of all registered voters, not just a majority of votes cast. The White House has denounced that as an absurd stacking of the deck against Yeltsin. Still ahead tonight, remembering one of the great human rights leaders of our time. Denver remembers Cesar Chavez and vows to keep up his fight. I'm Lynette Romero coming up, a tribute to a leader in history. I'm Ed Filmer. Coming up, the story of a spring roundup on the High Plains. It's not like what you may have seen in the cowboy movies. Also coming up, even the meek could sneak a peek at the Cherry Creek sneak today. Stay tuned. Our sales manager said, We're going to do whatever it takes to win this sellout. Our accountant said, You can't sell them that cheap. But right now at Boulevard Ford, it's the sale our accountant couldn't stop. Couldn't stop. Never gone, never tried. New F-Series trucks up to $5,000 off. New Explorers up to $4,000 off. If Freak Boulevard used car and truck drastically discounted. No money down. Deliver. Right now, only at Boulevard Ford. Take I-25 to Colorado Boulevard, then two blocks south. Hurry, we can't keep him tied up forever. How about a burger, baby? I don't want no burger. I sat down with clown today. Sandwich like the submarines that they serve at Subway. I don't want no greasy chicken. Don't wipe my dinner from a big machine. I want to save everybody. I want to treat you now.
snack. I want a Subway Sub Shop submarine. After 5 p.m., buy any regular footlong and soda and get the second footlong for 99 cents. Hi, I'm Jake Jabs. We're one of America's fastest growing furniture stores. See Truck Dealer today. Two people from Littleton are dead after a rollover accident early this morning. It happened on I-70 near Lookout Mountain. Kirk Smith and Joan Wombolt were in the car. They were not wearing seatbelts. They were thrown from the vehicle when it went off the road and rolled several times. Cesar Chavez, his life and his vision were honored in Denver today. Chavez died in Arizona on Friday, apparently of natural causes. Chavez organized the nation's migrant farm workers in the 1960s. He started the United Farm Workers Union and led a nationwide great boycott. As Lynette Romero reports, people in Denver today vowed to keep his dream of justice alive. Our Lady of Guadalupe Church this morning was packed with people honoring, remembering, and celebrating the life of Cesar Chavez. Honoring not the memory, but the life of Cesar Chavez. The church was filled with symbols of Chavez's three decades of leadership. The eagle, representing the nation's migrant farm workers. Red, representing their power and unity. La Huelga, the strike, and their leader, Cesar Chavez. It's impossible to talk about the dignity of humanity, even more difficult to talk about the dignity of God, if we don't recognize the dignity of those among us who are most despised and ignored and oppressed. Today we celebrate the life of Cesar Chavez. Because Cesar is alive. And why is he alive? Because there are still people who struggle for justice. We need to break down the walls of bigotry and prejudice and racism, which are alive and well. Juanita Herrera watched side by side with Chavez for a decade fighting for a better life for migrant farm workers. Fight! She says there's still so much work to be done. He put the seed in all of us so we can respect and get together and fight for justice. We should be thankful that God sent us such a wonderful person to teach us humility in the face of adversity, love when confronted with hate. Cesar Chavez was a just man who broke unjust laws. At times, there was laughter, cheers, and much applause. And there was sorrow, saying farewell to a great leader and friend. Somewhere in heaven, a place has been waiting for you. Pasa con Dios, hermano Cesar. Your kind, gentle words will now sprinkle down from el cielo like the springtime raindrops that water the crops and grow the nourishment for a better tomorrow. Lynette Romero, 9 News. There will be a candlelight vigil in honor of Cesar Chavez at 7 o'clock tonight at the Pecos Community Center. The parents of three teenagers accused in the beating of a CU student say they were working with police to try to keep their kids out of trouble. One of those arrested was 18-year-old Justin Michael Graber. He and his friends were apparently part of a group of teens who were well known to police in Boulder as troublemakers. Three of them are now accused of critically beating CU student Paul Kelly. He was attacked at a Boulder intersection after he stopped to talk to someone in a car. Beginning last fall, some of the parents had apparently met with police to try to work, work out ways of keeping their kids from getting into trouble in Boulder. The teens, who are now suspects in the case, had been involved in a number of episodes of drinking and fighting. Many of us remembered the Holocaust this week, a time to remember the atrocities of World War II when some six million Jews were killed by the Nazis. One of the better known names from that dark period in time was Anne Frank, a young lady who chronicled her days in hiding. Well, today the Anne Frank Awards were handed out. These are kids from all over Colorado in the fifth through twelfth grades. They won awards for art and writing. Their works are on display at the Mizell Museum. All pieces of work have to do with Anne Frank and the Holocaust. Across Colorado this time of year, ranchers are beginning spring roundup. Ed Filmer went to one of those roundups today. It wasn't at all like one of those rowdy old west pictures. It was more like a family gathering on the high plains of northeastern Colorado. 
is peaceful and relaxed. You don't have to fight that eight to five punch in the time call. Kirk Rush says ranch life on the high plains suits him just fine. He tried a job in the city once. I worked on construction. Some darn fool told me it was you can make good money on construction. I lasted three months. It looked like a good way to go crazy. So he settled into ranch life. And one of the things he says he likes about it best is how family and neighbors help out during roundup time. We've all been busy all winter. We don't see each other very often. And now we're, we're together and we'll have time to visit and exchange news and catch up a little bit. And Judy Rush grew up in Denver, but exchanged city life for ranch life. I never did like the city. I always always wanted to live in the country and and uh, worked with animals anytime I could and I was fortunate enough to find a cowboy and marry a cowboy move out to the out to the dry lands in the big prairie Judy and Kirk's daughter Lee is 16 this is the first year she's really had to work hard but she plans to stay in the cattle business my parents and all my friends are in it so why shouldn't I be in it you know that's just my main thought like her mom and dad, Lee Rush says she knows the value of peace of mind in this big open country. I mean, we know our neighbors, we know everybody in the school, everybody in the town. It, it can be hard. It, you know, there's days you wonder sometimes whether oh, it's worth it or not when you go to town and see somebody driving a big old fancy car. But I wouldn't trade places for him, with him for all the money in China. Spring Roundup at the Rush Ranch, a time of hard work, family, friends, and reflection about life on the high plains. I'll be here until they drag me off. From the Rush Ranch in Well County, Colorado, Ed Filmer, 9 News. After they finished the roundup chores this afternoon, all hands gathered at the ranch house for their pay. That was a big home-cooked meal. They earned it. That looks like hard work. Coming up in sports, draft day for the Broncos. Live to Dove Valley for a look at all of Denver's picks when we come back. Daddy, where are you going? Just a business trip, sweetheart. Can I help you? Sure, if you want to. What's this? So you don't forget who I am? How could I ever... At U.S. West, we know you don't have to live far apart to grow far apart. Hi, Dad. I was just thinking about you. So stay close in Colorado with in-state long distance from U.S. West, making the most of your time. Look who just beat French Mint's everyday low prices. French Mint. Announcing French Mint's great 82nd anniversary sale. Prices have been slashed even lower on name brand audio, video, and appliances. Plus, no down payment and no payments till August. And to top it off, you could win a new Ford Ranger or a fabulous Hawaiian vacation for two. But hurry, French Mint's great 82nd anniversary sale ends soon. French Mint, where you never pay more for quality. And if anyone claims otherwise, there's no way. It's a giant of a sale. The factory authorized giant spring sell-off with over 300 new in you. And it's only at Colorado Chrysler Plymouth, the friendly giant. That means Colts and Sundance. It's your choice. Just $79.88 for $125 a month. Voyager, America's best-selling minivan from only $13,488. Even a special purchase of 25 Fifth Avenue. All at one price, just $14,988. Plus immediate delivery of a fabulous new Concorde. For giant size savings with the cars you want most, it's Denver's giant spring sell-off. Only at Colorado Chrysler Plymouth. South Havana at Alameda, Aurora. What's Nino looking for? There's more fun than you can imagine at this year's Shrine Circus, April 29th through May 2nd at the Denver Coliseum. Nine Pals get discount tickets for showing your Nine Pals card at Safeway or Conoco. And there's more fun. Nine Nine Pals families will win memberships in the Ringmasters Club. Watch the Nine Pals Short Report this week for your chance to win. Fun is waiting for your family at the Shrine Circus, April 29th through May 2nd. Brought to you by your friends at Conoco, Safeway, and Nine Pals. The uh, best analogy I heard about Dan Williams today is if you're not going to try and score your own points, try and stop them from scoring the points. Well, you also know that Wade Phillips uh, always has loved defense. defense and right. uh, if the offensive player that they wanted, which was obviously Curtis Conway, was not going to be there, Dan Williams was the guy. Good and, one. Uh, yeah, you know, it's hard for me to sit here and tell you he's a good athlete because well, I don't think any of us in Denver, writers, uh, TV guys, anybody saw this guy play. I mean, nobody sat down and happened to catch a Toledo Rocket he's game this year. He's not on a big team, yeah. Yeah, but uh, he's a big guy, and he <laughs> certainly stood out in the competition he saw. The Broncos went defense, then offense in the NFL draft as they have made picks in each of the first two rounds so far. 
As we talked about Dan Williams, the defensive end out of Toledo, the team's first pick with the 11th choice overall today. Then in the second round, they took one of the most exciting players in all of college football, Glenn Milburn out of Stanford. Kind of a wing back in college. Look for him to catch the ball and return kicks here with the Broncos. Kevin Cork is at Bronco headquarters, just tingling with excitement. He rejoins us now as the Broncos now start to look ahead towards two third-round picks. Right, Kev? Absolutely, Tom. They traded the first one to move up to pick up Dan Williams, as you mentioned. That's how the Broncos ended up 11th as opposed to 14th. And, of course, they have two coming up here in the third round. Wade Phillips just upstairs said he may be back down here about 540 or so. We may come back live, and they may be right behind us announcing their third-round pick. At any rate, as you mentioned, Dan Williams, a guy who didn't even come to Denver for a tryout. The Broncos, assuming he wouldn't be on the board, of ultimately, at 14 in and even though they tried to move up, they weren't really banking on him being around at 11. So it's certainly a real plus for them. Earlier today, Bronco coach Wade Phillips talked about their number one pick. Uh, we just felt for our, our needs right now, uh, we needed a dominant defensive lineman. Uh, offensive and defensive lines, teams I see that are in the championship games, the Super Bowls and winning them are, have, are real strong in those two positions. Uh, that's where we wanted to be, so that's what we did. We're excited. It's a great pick for us. We've got some great young players here, but one thing we found out in Buffalo was guys from small schools play with big hearts, and we had a lot of those, and this kid is exactly the same, like an Andre Root from Cootstown, players like that, and I think that's what we've gotten in, in, in Dan Williams. So and He's my kind of guy in that uh, I know he's a, got great character. Uh, football is very important to him. Uh, he's got a professional attitude right now on a college level, uh, and that, that lends itself to a good combination of potentially being a good player in the league. Well, to be honest with you, I never felt a comfort zone. Um, I felt like every day that it, it was something that I had to prove, and to be totally honest with you, I was nervous here and and has been all the way up to this point because I didn't know what other people were thinking. I could only put myself out there and then people had to make the next step on, them, on their own. In the second round, the Broncos selecting Glenn Milburn, the slot back out of Stanford. His experience under former NFL coach Bill Walsh impressed the Broncos. Uh, he certainly can play on first and second down, go in motion, get out of the backfield. I mean, the same way Walsh used him, uh, we would use him, you know, and he was certainly effective doing that. So. Uh, it's just a guy that we think is a game breaker, you know, and hopefully that'll come true. But I, he's an exciting player. There's no doubt about that. I can only echo that. He's kind of a Dave Meggett possibility. The Broncos can work him on second and third downs. He can create a lot of problems for you. Seems like a super pick. Tom? All right, hopefully we'll check back with you. Maybe they'll be making that third round selection in just a bit. Kevin Cork out of Bronco headquarters. And uh, Dan Williams expected to get into town tonight, so we'll be hearing from him on our news at 10. All right, and you have a lot more to come, too. As usual, it's a busy Sunday in the world of sports. We'll have it all for you in just a couple minutes. Okay, see you then. Mm -hmm. If you thought today's weather was nice, wait till you hear about tomorrow. Bill Custer's next with the forecast. Because at Emic Dodge, we won't be undersold on any 1993 Dodge. Over 20 93 Shadows starting as low as 78.56. Emic Dodge has over 80 1993 Caravans starting as low as 13.395. Or a 93 Stealth for as low as 19.488. For Dodge, trust Emic Dodge for the absolute lowest prices, period. Emic Dodge, two blocks south of Bellevue on South Broadway. Emic Dodge, the name you've come to trust. What I got. Well, high flea market success story number 11. The Handyman. My wife wants to spend more time together, but I'm always working on these projects and it drives her crazy. So, to keep her happy, I took her with me to my flea market. Well, she went wild. I didn't see her for three hours. How much was this? 20 bucks. You're kidding. <laughs> well, at least we spend time having lunch together. Mile High Flea Market, Denver's largest attraction. Open weekends and Wednesdays year-round at I-76 and 88th Avenue. Bill Custer's forecast has the seal of approval of the American Meteorological Society. Last night, Bill had one of those satellite glitches where you couldn't get the picture of the tornado, but I, I guess you were able to get it today. We're going to do a make good. Okay. We're going to take a look at uh, the Tulsa tornado from a low angle, too. And uh, as we show you, we have a spotlight on it. You can see the northeastern corner of the state of Oklahoma. Watch how that thing just balloons up in that northeastern corner. Uh, just a few pictures in, starting at 2 p.m. yesterday, a picture every... Uh, half hour and uh, we'll take a look at it one more time look at that just blows up and then goes over into Arkansas Missouri after it's done its dirty deed and it was a dirty deed indeed 
Okay, there that is. And uh, we have some better pictures to show you. And we're going to show them to you right now because the place to be was at the car wash today, especially after the likes of yesterday with rain and snow. Dave Renwick was there, and so was Les Taylor cleaning his car. Got some shots of him there, too, at the car wash at Leeds Dale in Monaco. You betcha. And uh, everybody met their friends at the car wash today. It was a good place to be. And outside, of course, was the place to be on a day like today. Like to take one like this and put it in a, a mason jar and pull it out again about December. Uh, this is one of those dandy days. Let's take a look at the statistics for this day, shall we? All right, we're gonna take a look at the statistics. Our coolest temperature was 34 degrees. Yep, and our high today so far now, it could pop another degree, but so far it's 64 degrees. And I say that because the present temperature is 64 degrees out at Stapleton Field National Weather Service under sunny skies. Oh yeah. Humidity 26%, barometer 30.10 and falling with winds out of the southeast at 14 miles per hour. The air quality advisory right now has gone into the yellow, which means from now on until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, uh, the driving is banned, and they're asking us uh, also not to burn any wood, obviously, and it will co uh, continue until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning at this particular area. All right. Uh, when we take a look at the map as of dinner time tomorrow night, we see the rain showers and thunderstorms will be lambasting the entire eastern seaboard at supper time tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to be in the in-between, but just barely, because this front right here is going to start creasing our northwestern corner at supper time tomorrow night. It has some rain showers as it goes on up into the north-central part of the country. And as it comes across us later on tomorrow evening, a chance of some showers and thunderstorms arriving late. But most of the day tomorrow, very, very good. You betcha. All right, let's put in the high temperatures for tomorrow. They range from a cool 53 degrees in Seattle, where they're going to have some rain showers tomorrow, to a hot high of... Look at these folks already starting to make sounds like summer down here in Phoenix. 98 for a hot high tomorrow. And we have some uh, low to mid uh, 50s, upper 50s here along the eastern seaboard. Uh, take a look at the uh, one that might interest you a bit more and take it along with you. As for nine country tomorrow, make it read a spring fling. And yes, indeed, for most of the day, it's going to be a dandy with some 60s and 70s along the front range in eastern plains, 50s and 60s in the high country and 60s and 70s over on the western side. And the smiling sun has his shades on, but later on, as I say, tomorrow evening, then a chance of some showers and thunderstorms developing. Here's the forecast for the Denver metropolitan area. Tonight now, fair skies and mild with an overnight low around 41 degrees. Tomorrow, sunny, then becoming partly sunny, but still real springy. High of 75. All right, when normal, 65. Chance of some late showers and thunderstorms. Tuesday, 60. Cloudy, you see that front is bringing cooler temperatures. Cloudy and rain. Wednesday, 50, under partly cloudy skies with a chance of some rain. And then on Thursday, 65, again under partly sunny skies and building back up to 70 on Friday under partly sunny skies. By the way, on the old fish thermometer, <laughs> you christened it that last night, right, right Ann? Uh, our temperature presently sits at 97 degrees. No official thermometer dare ever get sunlight on it, but unofficially, in the sun, out in the nine backyard on the old fish thermometer, 97 and a half degrees. Back on the here. official old thermometer. The official. I like that. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Coming up next, last night's lotto numbers. The jackpot was eight and a half million dollars. And a one-on-one -on -one talk with Benny and June, the stars of a hit comedy movie at theaters nationwide. Plus a lot of sneakers pounding the pavement today in Cherry Creek. Round up the savings like never before. It's our giant Wrangler Roundup at Colorado Jeep Eagle. That means legendary Jeep Wranglers as low as 10 988 And get this, take your pick of 50 equipped just the way you want them, all at one price. Not 17 or 18,000, but only 14 488. That's right, 50 all at one price. Plus Denver's highest trade allowances and a great selection of Grand Cherokees and Eagle Vision. Don't miss the giant Wrangler Roundup only at Colorado Jeep Eagles. Colorado's Jeep Store, 505 South of Anna Aurora. Best Buy's added another top name in computers. A line of high-performance machines with the muscle and expandability to power your home or office into the future. Announcing the newest line of compact computers. Now at low Best Buy prices. And this week, it's 0% financing and no payments. 89 per month for all that. But hurry, supplies are limited. See your favorite Colorado GMC truck dealer today. This is something else. The lotto jackpot just keeps on growing. Nobody matched all six numbers in last night's drawing. Now Wednesday's drawing will be worth about 10 million bucks. Not too bad. Here are the numbers from last night, though. Three, five, six, 
15, 22, and 42. 108 folks matched five numbers, and they won $491 apiece. Benny and June is the story of two misfits who fall in love. It was supposed to star Woody Harrelson and Laura Dern, but when Harrelson opted for an indecent proposal, the film went through a major facelift. And now stars Aidan Quinn and Mary Stuart Masterson as Benny and June. Entertainment reporter Scott Patrick chatted with Benny and June, Quinn and Masterson, one-on-one. -on -one. There's something really wonderful about the way she sees the world and in this really different way. You don't like raisins? Not really. They taste sweet, but really they're just humiliated grapes. There's nothing really conventional about her way of, of living in the world. Mary Stuart Masterson is the June of Benny and June. June carries a come what may attitude brought on by a mental disability. Aiden Quinn is the Benny of Benny and June, the brother taking care of the sister who has been dealt a bad hand. I lost. What's in the pot? A cousin. She loses a poker game, which means she wins Johnny Depp. I'm Sam. So are you. Benny and June and Sam form a triangle with odd angles. It's a side of life that we don't normally see. It's been said uh, they make so much uh, money being at their worst, why should they ever try to be at their best? Who died and made you Ed McMahon? Quinn can relate to life outside of the mainstream, going all the way back to his high school dress code. Well, I used to uh, wear clogs and women's bracelets and uh, very short jeans cut off with holes in them. And, uh, I did it really to shock people, and I was very good in sports, so the jocks didn't know what to think of me. And and I was a good fighter, and I I had gotten I lived in Ireland where you had to learn how to fight. Quinn and Masterson, Benny and June hope their quirky film, which dares to be different, will show that labels are meant for cans, not for people. And that's what the whole movie's about. Um, that people are just who they are, whatever their disability, and. And it's not really about illness, it's about wellness and um, about managing with uh, you know, whatever the strikes are against you. I love him! Yeah? Well, you are crazy. Scott Patrick, Nine News. Benny and June is now playing at a theater near you, as they say, and the film is rated PG. Thousands of runners took part in Denver's biggest foot race today. The Cherry Creek Sneak is a five-mile race that circles the Cherry Creek Shopping Center. This was the 11th year for the race. The first place winners were Patty Murray of Boulder and Pat Porter of Alamosa. The wheelchair winner was Al Talbot of Littleton. Tom Green is back, a full plate of sports, and we're thinking there may be another Bronco pick here soon. Yeah, they are going into the third round at the NFL draft, but uh, all the talk is going to focus on this young man, Dan Williams, who probably will be a starter for the Denver Broncos upon his arrival. We'll hear more about him and all the Broncos news next. I'm on the road day in and day out. It's, hey, taxi, stop, and, uh, cabbie, quick, stop here. <laughs> I know the value of good brakes. My livelihood depends on it. And when I'm off duty, our lives depend on good brakes. That's why I depend on Meineke. At Meineke, we do brakes. And we do them right. We analyze the whole system, pinpoint the problem, and fix it. Period. No matter why you're on the road, you can depend on brakes from Meineke. I do. Because at Emmett Chrysler Plymouth, we will not be undersold. Emmett Chrysler Plymouth has over 20 93 Colts, starting as low as 77.88. 93 Sundance is priced as low as 77.88. 1993 Lasers priced as low as 10.588. Or pick up a 93 Voyager with air conditioning for as low as 13.988. Emmett Chrysler Plymouth for the absolute lowest prices. Period. Emmett Chrysler Plymouth, the name you've come to trust, just north of Bellevue on South Broadway. What's the best thing about American Family Auto Insurance? Well, why not ask my mom? She's had American Family for over 20 years. Well, really, you should ask my dad. He's had American Family Auto for over 30 years. They take care of my family. I like that. Loyalty. The more.
mark of satisfied customers. American Family Insurance. Look in the white or yellow pages for the American Family Agent nearest you. Some things are easy to share, some aren't. But the Post has sections, better sections, so it's never hard to find what you want. Want a new position? The Post has more jobs, better jobs. And because this paper has the best stories from all these papers, you'll know more than anyone. The Post comes by 6 a.m. guaranteed, too. So call and get the Post for 95 cents a week. That's half off. You get better color, more jobs, 6 a.m. delivery, more recycled newsprint, and half off. Call 832-3232. Because no one shares or cares like the Post. From a college student to a superstar in a matter of hours, really, it's going to be fun. You know, it's culture shock for all these youngsters. As they come out of college, they become the instant millionaires. You talk about that. Their fame and fortune is mm -hmm. right there in front of them. But for a guy to come from Toledo right. to the media attention that's focused on the Broncos, even with baseball added this year, it's going to be interesting to see how Dan Williams does. Maybe he'll eat it up. Maybe it'll be great. Uh, we can only hope for the best. Broncos have added the first two names to the class of 93 today, with more yet to come as the NFL draft rolls on. This morning, the Broncos moved up three spots by sending the last of their three third-round picks and the 14th pick overall in the draft to Cleveland for the 11th pick overall. And with that pick, they took defensive end Dan Williams out of Toledo. Look for the 6-foot, 3-inch, 290-pound rookie to be the starter at right defensive end right away. In the second round, one of the most electrifying performers in college ball the past few years is headed this way. Glenn Milburn out of Stanford, a terrific kick returner who will be a wide receiver in the pros. The work goes on out at Bronco headquarters. A long day for everyone out there, including our man caught at the draft, Kevin Cork. He rejoins us now live. Kevin, how is the third round progressing? Third round moving right along, Tommy. The Broncos were actually going to come down here in just a few minutes, but now I guess they've headed right back upstairs to do some more work in their war room, as it were. As you mentioned, Dan Williams, the first pick for the Broncos. Guy comes out of a small program in Toledo, but if you remember, Bob Ferguson made a, a living, really, if you will, in selecting small to, uh, small college players for the Buffalo Bills. Andre Risen and some other guys, Andre Reed, pardon me, uh, guys like that come to mind. Earlier today, Wade Phillips talked about his number one draft pick and said small school or not, he's certainly got a lot of talent. Number one, a player that comes from a small school has a lot to prove to everyone else and themselves. And, you know, they, the only way they can attack it is by playing, you know, with enthusiasm and trying it and giving their best shot. And basically, the pick that made the difference was uh, Chicago. Uh, on Chicago's pick, if Chicago takes Williams, uh, or takes uh, a defensive lineman, yeah, mm -hmm. If they take a defensive lineman, then, then Conway falls back and we get a choice of one of the two receivers. So that's, that's, that was our scenario, and that's pretty well where, how it worked out. Here's a look. Dan Williams, defensive lineman out of Toledo, 6'3", 290, runs a 4'7", 40. That's pretty amazing for a guy that size. Second round pick, Glenn Milburn, the split back from uh, Stanford University, 5'8", 177. This guy runs about a 4'4", and uh, certainly CU fans remember him. He ran through the buff defense for seven catches and 50-plus yards and a touchdown last time his program met up with Colorado. Tom, things continue here in the third round. We'll have more details for you tonight on 9 News at 10. Yeah, there is a lot more at 10 o'clock. I know Dan Williams is coming in. and Maybe three more draft picks. They wanted to get through four rounds today, didn't they? Absolutely. They're trying to do some wheeling and dealing, apparently. You know, they have two picks remaining in the third. If they can maybe make a move to ship some of those away and pick up a draft pick for next year, something like that could be happening upstairs. And obviously, they're trying to make their way through four rounds. Took a long time to get through the first round, so uh, we'll see how things turn out. All right. Complete wrap tonight at 10. Thanks a lot, Kevin Court. Okay. Good day for at least three local college football players as Deion Figures, Leonard Renfro, and Chad Brown out of CU were taken in the first two rounds. Now, Figures was expected to be a first-rounder, and he went on the 23rd pick overall to the Pittsburgh Steelers, a franchise that seems to have fallen in love lately with the Buffs. He won the Jim Thorpe Award as the nation's top college defensive back. Leonard Renfro went on the very next pick. He'll be playing pro ball in Pennsylvania as well. The Philadelphia Eagles chose him with the 24th choice of the first round. All he has to do is take some of Reggie White snaps along the defensive line. Renfro came out a year early after completing his junior year. Chad Brown went in the second round. Again, the Steelers take a buff. 
the linebacker was taken on the pick right after the Broncos took Glenn Milburn. As far as the top 10 picks, Drew Bledsoe, the first pick overall, the quarterback goes to New England. A quarterback goes second as well, Rick Meyer from Notre Dame to Seattle. Garrison Hurst goes to Phoenix as the Cardinals give the Jets Johnny Johnson and their fourth pick overall. With that pick, the Jets take Marvin Jones. So they got Jones and Johnson for Garrison Hurst. John Copeland out of Alabama goes to Cincinnati. His teammate Eric Curry goes to Tampa Bay as Bama has players go fifth and sixth overall. As Wade Phillips said, the Bears took Curtis Conway seventh. Willie Rofe, the offensive lineman, goes to the Saints. Lincoln Kennedy, the big tackle from Washington to the Falcons and fullback out of Notre Dame, Jerome Bettis, goes to the L.A. Rams. Switching gears, a beautiful day for baseball at Mile High today. Unless you're a Rockies fan, the home team was shellacked by the Florida Marlins 11 to 1. Huge crowd, 71,192. Treated rudely by the Marlins. Third inning, Dave Maggot and the base hit up the middle off of Bryn Smith. Walt Weiss and Chuck Carr come in to score. Marlins up 2-0. After four, Bryn Smith had to leave with a pulled hamstring. Scott Aldred came in but was no relief. Alex Arias, the base hit to left, scores Benito Santiago and Jeff Conine. It was 4-0 Florida. The Marlins then load the bases and Junior Felix clears them. A grand slam over the left field wall. 8-0 Marlins, Aldridge's line not pretty, seven runs, six hits in just two-thirds of an inning. Things weren't going well for the Rockies in the field either. Alex Cole drops the fly ball. They avert the shutout in the ninth inning, though, but still a tough day for the Rockies. I think uh, when Bryn got hurt, that kind of, um, and uh, Scott came in, they jumped on us real quick. It was just, you know, down by that many runs early. It just, we, it, we didn't see much hope, so, uh, you know, they, they put the hammer to us, you know. I can't really explain it. Rockies lose it 11 to 1. The Cubs will be in town to start a two-game series tomorrow. David Need will go for the Rocks against Mike Harkey. Elsewhere in the National League today, the Padres and Mets heated things up at Shea Stadium. In the top of the first inning, Gary Sheffield was up at bat, and he and Todd Hundley start to have a chat, a chat about stealing signs, and that chat turns ugly. Sheffield and Hundley get after it pretty good. Both players ejected from the game. Top of the second, Tony Gwynn lifts one to left field with men on. Vince Coleman fights the Sun and loses. Two runs score. The Padres win at Shea, 9-8. The Cubs got two in the ninth to beat the Reds 2-1. Tim Belcher pitched a great game before falling apart in the ninth. The Phillies complete a sweep of the Dodgers. Cards over the Braves. San Francisco wins at Montreal. Bonds and Williams with homers for the Giants. And Pittsburgh beats Houston 7-2. Tigers at Minnesota, and the home run parade continues for the Tigers. Chad Kruder a two-run shot as the Tigers rallied in the seventh inning. Rallied in the seventh. They got eight in the seventh. Tony Phillips followed Cruder's shot with another homer. The Tigers score 45 runs in three games at Minnesota this weekend. They win it 17 to 5 today. Make that 16 to 5. Darren Jackson had a homer as the Blue Jays beat the White Sox. Texas will win at County Stadium. It was Kansas City over the Orioles. The Yankees lead Seattle. They are in the eighth inning, and Cleveland shut out the A's 6 to nothing. The NBA season ends tonight, and for the Nuggets, it ends as well. A 7 o'clock start against Charles Barkley and the Suns at Big Mac. They then can turn their attention to the lottery and the draft. The NBA draft, that is. What was supposed to be an important game in New York today meant little else than to serve as a possible preview for the Eastern Conference Finals. The Bulls and Knicks hook up at the Garden. First quarter, Michael Jordan gets caught up in the air. John Starks takes it down, looks behind his back, and sees Patrick Ewing for the big jam right there. Moments later, it's Ewing again. This time, he just works his way in and over everyone. He had 22 points. Fourth quarter of a close game, John Starks takes the ball to the hole for two more. He had 22 as the Knicks beat the Bulls, 89-84. The rest of the NBA matinee games, Cleveland beat the Sixers. Detroit over the Nets by six. Boston a winner at Washington. Seattle falls to Golden State, and the Jazz lose to the T-Wolves, 113-111. In hockey, the Chicago Blackhawks joined the Boston Bruins as divisional winners unceremoniously swept right out of the Stanley Cup playoffs in the first round. The St. Louis Blues turned the trick on Chicago today. Less than three minutes to go, the Blues had a 3-2 lead, but it's Jeremy Roenick with the rebound, and the Blackhawks are alive. 3-3, they go to overtime, but in OT, Ed Belfour wanders behind the net. The puck comes out to Craig Janney, who snaps it home. The Blues win it in overtime final there 4-3 out Belfort not even a little bit happy about the way things broke down the Blues move on the Blackhawks get to work on their beating up of goals anyway other scores it was the Kings beating the Flames 3-1 that series now tied at two games apiece and yes the Penguins finally lost a playoff game Jersey beat them 4-1 the Penguins still lead that series three games to one John McClain shows how to defend Mario Lemieux and it's a rather painful way to do that. Second period, time winding down. Stefan Richet to Tommy Abilene. One-timer deflected past Barrasso. The Devils win it 
Four to one. And in golf, Steve Elkington was one shot behind Rocco Mediate on the final hole of the Greater Greensboro Open, but he rolls in the birdie putt to force sudden death. In sudden death, it took him four extra holes. Great six iron on the 16th by Rocco Mediate as he carries it to within about four feet of the hole. That set up a birdie try that would win the Greater Greensboro Open. A mere $270,000 for the first place winner, Rocco Mediate in Greensboro. Pocket change, right? No problem. <laughs> All right, thanks. Sure. Coming up on Nine News, a preview of how the West was lost to attempts at peace between the U.S. and Geronimo. Five. And luxurious than a Jeep Grand Cherokee. The Isuzu Trooper. Practically amazing. There are those that think the Isuzu Trooper is the best looking four-wheel drive on the road today. We happen to think it also looks pretty attractive on paper, too. Presenting the Trooper Lease. See your Isuzu dealer for details. Tonight, Nine News and the Discovery Channel continue the premiere of How the West Was Lost. It's a mini-series that looks at the impact westward expansion had on five Native American tribes. Our focus this time is on the Apaches and an attempt to forge a peace with a warrior Geronimo. March, 1886, Geronimo agrees to a parley. He and Crook meet in Canyon de los Embudos, Mexico. Both sides armed and ready for treachery. After three days of threats and promises, it all comes down to a few simple words. You must make up your mind whether you'll stay out on the warpath or surrender. If you stay out, I'll keep after you and kill the last one. If it takes 50 years. But for Geronimo, the end is here. Two or three words are enough. I give myself up to you. Do with me what you please. I surrender. Once I moved about like the wind. Now I surrender to you. And that is all. Geronimo's warriors also agree to surrender on the condition they'll be imprisoned briefly, then allowed to go home. But that night, a whiskey peddler convinces the Indians the U.S. will never honor Crook's promises. Once more, Geronimo runs off to the Sierra Madre, taking 20 warriors and their families. How the West Was Lost airs right after us at 6 o'clock on Channel 9. It does look fascinating. A final check on the weather and the story of a lonely cat stuck on a pole in Arvada when we come back. Once in a while, a major event occurs which changes the way you shop. Grand West Outfitters has come to Denver. Outrageous deals. Right now, save $370 on the Fuji Sundance mountain bike. And don't miss the California Pro TXT 500 inline skate on sale for $79.95. Or stay dry on the Merrill Westwind Gore-Tex boot, only $69.99. Grand West Outfitters grand opening is going on now. Don't miss it. Shortline Subaru. Subaru prices have gone into reverse. Just in time for spring, Subaru is rolling back prices on their most popular cars. Like the exciting SVX Sports Coupe, a world-class four-wheel drive sports car, and on Subaru Legacy sedans and wagons. Factory to dealer incentives and owner loyalty bonuses make right now the best time ever to buy a new Subaru from Shortline's huge inventory. And with the just-announced special lease rates, a new Subaru Impreza is more affordable than ever. See us today at Shortline Subaru, 580 South Havana, Aurora. Well, a stubborn cat in Arvada put its owners through quite a weekend. The Roy Balls called us today. They say the family feline Sam climbed up a power pole on Friday. Sam sat and sat and sat while the owners called the fire department, the police department, even TCI Cable in hopes of a ladder truck. They were out of luck, but finally today, that's a public serviceman climbing the pole. And naturally, just as he does it, of course, Sam takes matters into his own hands, and Sam's fine, and just wanted to know that they cared enough to send the very best, Ward. Poor kitty. 
Hmm. Here's a story about Bill Custer's alma mater, Penn State. A female student there is furious with one of her male fellow students. She gave him a $1,200 stereo to get him to take her place during an exam. He took the test for her, but he flunked it. Now she says that's breach of contract, wants her stereo back. He says the deal involved taking the test, not, not passing it. What's in the water out there anyway? <laughs> Something strange. <laughs> Something strange. Something strange. All right. right. Thanks for joining us. That's what made the news this Sunday evening, April 25th. I'm Ward Lucas with Ann Lanker, Tom Green, and Bill Custer. We'll see you tonight at 10. This has been Nine News from Colorado's 24-hour news source.